guys, it's Shelly here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. So I finally completed the page I was supposed to do a collar along in from Teresa Goodridge's book, Autumn Charm. This is the first page I'm colouring in this book and I'm, I'm so excited about this book. I really love the autumn themed pages in this book. I think I've mentioned before, this is probably the only seasonal colouring book that I have and um, I don't usually buy seasonal colouring books because I feel a little bit limited. I do colour by the season a lot of the times, but I also sometimes colour pages that are not in the season. So it just depends on my moods occasionally. But most of the time I like to colour in the season and I love colouring autumn. I love autumn as a season as well. So I was really excited to get this book and this is, I think, the third book I have by Teresa Goodridge now. Um, I've only coloured one in the one page each in each of the other books that I have. But um, yeah, I thought I'd get stuck into this book and I'd put up a poll on the community tab with a few pages that I'd chosen to see what you guys would like to see me colour. I think it was a, a choice of three. Was it three or four pages I'd chosen? And the this page won. And I'm so glad that it did because, yes, I, I was happy to colour any of the pages I'd given as a choice, but I really like this page. I find it's like it's such a cosy page and I love the point of view where illustrations make you feel like you're in a room and you're looking out the window at a scene. And so I really was excited to colour this page. The only thing I knew about this page was that yes it was going to be autumnal so there was going to be a lot of orange and yellow leaves and trees and so I could only imagine the part of the illustration that was framed by the window really and then and I think I sort of also imagined what wood colour I would want and then other than that I just then decided as I was going along what colours I was going to add in. So you will see me during this colour along after I have coloured the outside scene and the frame of the the window, the, the window frame, I then may jump from elements, from one element to another because I wasn't 100% sure what I was going to be doing. So I was just choosing as I went along. This is only the third page that I've coloured of Teresa Goodrich, so I'm still learning her style. I'm still trying to figure out how to colour her style. And I've out of the three pages that I've now coloured, only two of them have been scenes. One was a from home sweet home and interior um, illustration of a craft of the craft room. And so I'm still trying to figure out how I like to colour. Teresa's um, scene pages but I have really enjoyed coloring this second scene page of Teresa Goodridge and I think I'm obsessed with her artwork now I I really find it quite relaxing coloring her pages and I find it a bit easy to choose colors I think and yeah it's just I really have fun coloring her pages as always, I use my Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils and in this particular page, I have used them wet as well as dry. However, you don't need to use them wet if you don't have Albrecht Dura pencils and you have the polychromos or you have any other pencils that are not watercolour pencils that you're just doing a shade match or a conversion um, for the shades. It doesn't matter. You can just use blender pencils, blender pens, or just use your pencils to blend all your pencils together. Because I have the Albrecht Dürer pencils, I have that option to use water to just blend my pencils together so it doesn't take too long trying to cover the whites of the paper. So yeah, in this page, I did use my water to activate the pencils. Um, I think a fair amount, especially I was going to say especially for the outside scene, but I think for, for the interior as well. So yes, I have activated the pencils in many of the cases and then I've gone over the pencils dry as well. So definitely you don't need to use water. You don't need to use watercolour pencils. Just use dry pencils if you don't have watercolour pencils and just, you know, blend like you normally would. Other than the Albrecht Dura pencils, I used one Tombow Jewel brush pen just for basing of the background wallpaper. I used 
um, paint pens, um, specifically Thule Art paint pens, quite a few different colors. As you guys know, I have been enjoying my Thule Art. I have mentioned in a few videos that I've been enjoying the Thule Art paint pens. And um, so, yeah, I'm growing my collection of them. And if anyone is ever interested in a review of them, if you're interested in the pens, let me know and I can discuss in a video about the pens. But yeah, I really enjoy using it in Teresa Goodridge's books, especially. For some reason, it just, I think, helps bring the page to life after you've done your color, you use your pencils. And I've used, I think, definitely the white Posca and some metallic gel pens. And I'm just trying to think if I used any glitter gel pens. I don't think I did. But yeah, I used, um, that's basically all I used for the page. So I started my colouring with the outside uh, scene because, like I said, that's the only part of the page I knew what I, I could imagine what I wanted it to look like. And so I just started with basing and I decided that, yes, there's going to be a lot of yellows and oranges um, because it's autumn, but I wanted there to be a little bit of greens as well to break it up. So basically, I was imagining the beginnings of autumn where the trees will be a little bit green, but they're starting to turn yellow and orange. And so, yeah, I was going to do a mix of yellow, oranges and hints of green um, on the trees and the grass. I knew I was going to make green again because it was the beginnings of autumn in my mind. And because I was imagining the early phase of autumn, I thought that the tree that was on the left side of the illustration looked a little bit sparse of the leaves. And so I thought I would try to add some leaves on that tree. Now, as I've said before, I'm not an artist. I'm a self-taught colorist. And so even to draw something as simple as leaves is a big challenge for me. So instead of drawing them in, I just decided to you know, choose the colors that I was going to use on the leaves and try and use those colors just to sort of sort of give hints of leaves in the background. So just do the shading in the gaps between the leaves to make it look like there's more leaves in the background and then just make a few pointed shapes to make them look like leaves, um, you know, on the edges of the tree. So that's what I sort of tried to do. And I think it worked. I think it made the tree look a little bit more full. Um, and yet it still looked autumnal. So yeah, I think I liked that I attempted to do that. And I like how it looks. For the other trees, I did a mix. I did some trees that were completely yellowy orange. And then like the main tree, sort of in the middle of the illustration, it's not really the main tree, but it's right in the middle of the illustration. I decided to bring in hints of yellow and orange into a green tree. And so I just mixed up the rest of the trees a little bit with yellows, oranges and greens. I decided to leave the sky a simple blue because I didn't want to distract from the rest of the scene because I think that's the main thing on this page. Um, just being able to make it look warm and cozy looking out that window and so yeah i decided to just leave the sky a simple blue color i forgot to mention that right at the beginning before i started um putting down the pencil so after i'd done basing so i based the out the elements outside the window um with my pencils and then activated it with water and before I started going over the base with my pencils dry, I did, um, I used a white pencil to sort of put marks on the glass panes of the windows because I was trying, if you guys have ever seen my um, video on how I color glass or bottle, I try and put my highlight with my white pencil in on the glass so that when I go over with other pencils the, the other colored pencils don't get picked up as much and so it looks a little bit lighter in the areas that I've put down the white pencil already and so I thought I'd try that effect with the windows as well so I put down around the edges of each glass um, rectangle 
I put down sort of an outline of the white pencil and then I brought in the white pencil sort of, you know, strokes of the white pencil um, towards the center of each rectangle just to sort of give a glass effect. And then I thought that as I go over with my, pe my pencils dry when I'm coloring the rest of the page again, less of the pigment will be picked up from those particular colors that I use. And so it will start to give a glass effect um, of the windows. Hopefully I explained that well, but as you're watching, you will see what I'm doing and you will see that the um, colors that are behind the window look a little bit faded out compared to right in the center of our illustration where there's no window. So yeah, that's what I did for the windows. And then the other thing I, I attempted on this page, what I could imagine was, you know, when you see the, well, when you see in nature, when you go for walks and stuff during autumn, you see all the leaves on the sides of the road. And if you see some photographs of autumn, of the, of, of an autumn scene, you know, um, a similar scene where you're looking at a photo that's on a road or a path, you see all these autumn orange colored leaves fallen down on the floor on the edges of the road and scattered a tiny bit onto the center of the road or the path and I wanted to try and do that effect and I had no idea how I was going to achieve it but that's what I could just keep imagining so I left the path of the outside scene till the end after I'd done all the trees and all the um, all the grass and the sky and the bark I did everything just constantly thinking about how I was going to try and do the path the way I wanted to and I'm actually really happy with how it turned out I'm really glad I did not get scared or worried that I was going to mess up the page and I tried to do what I, I was picturing in my mind because it would have been so easy for me to just say, no, I can't mess up this page. It's for color along on the channel and it has to go perfect. I, I knew what I wanted my page to look like. And I was like, OK, I'm, I'm just going to be brave and I'm going to try it out. And yeah, I think it worked. And for someone who is not an artist, I think I came up with a pretty good idea to try and give that effect. And I think the only reason it has worked is because the path is sort of in the distance. And so I did not have to make the leaves on the floor look like leaves, meaning I did not have to draw out every single leaf and make it look like crisp lines or, you know, perfectly shaped leaves or anything. I was able to make it look a little bit blurry, yet give that sense or basically trick the eye to think that those are leaves on the ground and it's really simple basically all I did was use the similar shades of yellow and oranges and browns as I did in my trees and I think I also if I'm not mistaken must have used uh, dark sepia um, so I used those colors to create the effect and all I did was work up from my lightest shade so my yellow to my light orange to my darker orange to the browns and then to the dark sepia and I was literally just doing sort of circles or ovals on the ground so I was just doing lots and lots of circles and or ovals and um, I was just adding the colors as I was going along so I did that, the yellows first and then the oranges um, and I, I would put the orange sort of over certain areas of the yellow, obviously, and then the darker shades as I was going along, I'd put it over the, you know, oranges. And then finally coming to the dark sepia, I just used very little hints of it, especially closer to the window um, so that it wasn't too dark. And I was doing it more at the edges and further in the distance off the path I did quite a bit of the dark sepia to make it look like it was in the distance and so yeah I just kept doing circles and it turned out like this and I'm, I'm actually happy with how it turned out and um, I think the only other thing to mention is as you're working up your shades you're using less circles so you 
majority of the circles will be when you do the yellow so you put lots of circles down or ovals and then when you go to the orange you'll be putting down lots of ovals again but slightly fewer and then fewer still with the darker orange and then fewer still with the browns and then with the dark sepia you, you're putting down very few circles on the ground and um, it kind of worked. <laughs> So yeah, that was something new that I tried and yeah, I'm glad I did. I think it helps with giving that whole autumn vibe, I think, to that outside scene. The next thing I did was doing the window frame and I think that I, I decided on the colour I was going to do. I wanted to try and bring in, I, I wanted to try and not use browns because I knew that there were going to be there was going to be so much yellow orange and brown in the outside then the tree trunks uh, of the trees on the outside scene were going to be brown and the fence I think I had decided was going to be brown and so I decided that the window frame cannot be brown so I couldn't think of what other color to do other than something like I've done so it's still sort of hints of brown but more on the reddish or pink side I basically based with pink shades and then started getting darker with other shades um, so that it just gave a hint of a different colour of wood. Then the next thing was the cat. Now as I was doing the window frame I could I was already starting to think about the cat because I knew I'd used so much brown and on the page and so I thought okay the cat can't be brown it can't be tan coloured and so I just decided to go for a grey cat. I thought that would be nice and so I did a grey cat with hints of a little bit of brown in it, just so it wasn't a bright grey cat. <laughs> At this point, when I coloured the cat, I knew that I needed to start bringing some colour into the page now, other than the um, autumnal colours. And so I was trying to think of what colours to bring in, and I decided, okay, I should do the wall first, so that that sort of sets the scene for the interior and then I can choose what colour to do the cushions and the mattress and just recently I've done the page I, I mentioned the page in home sweet home the craft room and my wall in that particular page turned out really bright and so I already knew that I did not want to do a bright wall and I knew that if I went bright, even by mistake, it would just completely take away from the focus of, uh, would take away the focus from the, the window scene. And so I decided to be a little bit boring and just do a normal sort of beige wall. And I used a little bit of Tombow, uh, one Tombow jaw brush pen to do basing. Um, and then I just darkened it up a little bit. So I kept the wall very simple at this stage. Then for the cushions, I couldn't think of what I wanted to do, the cushions and the mattress. At first I thought I was going to bring in the blue that was in the sky um, into the interior scene. However, I wasn't liking the what I could imagine. Like I wasn't liking the blue um, on the interiors. And so I thought pink would look really good with the oranges and greens. So I decided to go for a very bright pink. As as you guys know, I like bright colours and so it had to happen. And so I decided on the mattress being pink and the only other colour I could see for the cushions were was yellow. And so I decided to go for pink and yellow and I thought it worked because it was sort of bringing in the warm yellow colours from the outside scene into the interior and I thought that worked pretty well. And so that's how I decided on the interior colours. So I used the pinks, the yellows, and then I also brought in the outside green um, into the interior with, uh, with by colouring the book green. And that's it. Then I was just using those colours to complete the page. So the pink mattress, the yellow cushions, green book and then I was I used the pink for the mug and I used pink and yellow for the sign on the top as well and again I wasn't sure what I was going to do with the sign but I decided that once I'd started filling up the page with color I realized that that sign the wood the sign would be wood and it would look um, it would be the same color as the window so that's what I did for the sign and that was the pencil work all done and so it then came down to adding the embellishments. So with the embellishments, I kept it quite simple, really. I didn't think that the page needed that much um, additional 
elements on it I think I liked what the page was looking like and so I just used some paint pens like I said I've been enjoying using my Thule Arts um, recently for the last few months and I really liked it on the Teresa Goodrich scene page I did um, the very her very first page that I colored and so I decided to try it on this page as well and I just used the paint pens to just highlight certain areas um, sort of reflections I used the white Posca pen to do the steam coming out of the um, cup and to do the highlights on that and then I used a little bit of paint pen as well to just emphasize the fur on the cat and I think that's about it then for the wallpaper so the background wall of the interior I decided to bring in a little bit of pink because I'd used so much pink on the page so I just used a, a, a pink metallic sakura sakura jelly roll to do the lines that are on that page instead of coloring it in with pencil I decided to use a pink metallic pen uh, pen to draw in those lines and I think that works really well as well kept the the wallpaper sort of simple yet with a little bit of color in it and just bringing in all the color from from the surrounding um, illustration and I think that's about it I used the oh yes I used the white Posca pen to do to emphasize the glass effect on the windows as well so I was using it to where we had put the pencil the white pencil right at the beginning I used the Posca pen to sort of um, scribble on a little bit of white paint and then I used my finger to just um, smudge it a bit so that it wasn't too bright white and it just made I think it did make the windows look a little bit more uh, glassy and sort of um, made the outside scene that you're looking through the glass look less clear basically um, to differentiate it from the scene that you can see that is not not covered by glass and so I really like how that came out too um, I think that's about it I don't think I used any other embellishments yeah and that's the page complete and I had so much fun playing with this page sorry it's taken me a while to bring it to you guys like I said I did have some stuff going on and so that sort of delayed me starting the page but once I started it, it didn't take me that long to actually finish it um, so yeah I'm I'm happy that I did this page I hope you guys like how it's turned out I every time I look at the page I do get a bit excited because I actually feel the autumn vibe and so yeah I'm happy with how it turned out I hope you guys like the colors I've chosen for this page and I hope to see some of you color along with me. I really get happy when I see you guys color along with me. I, even if you do some changes and you do your own versions of it, it's just nice seeing what you guys come up with as well. So definitely if you do color this page, if you do happen to come across the video and use some ideas on your page, um, please share it with me on Instagram. Just um, make me aware that it's out there so I can have a look at your page and um, yeah, so I can see what, what kind of ideas you guys come up with too. Okay, so I'll leave you guys in peace to watch the rest of the video and I'll hopefully be back with you very soon. Thank you as always for watching my videos. It I really do appreciate it. It means so much to me. I love interacting with you guys. It makes me so happy, you know, reading your comments, getting messages from you on Instagram or getting your emails. It just makes all of this worth it. I just started YouTube on a whim, as you guys know, and I did not expect anything back from it. And you guys have just made it all worth the effort. Um, and that's why I keep enjoying doing the videos. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks for um messaging me saying hi and yeah i'll be back with you guys soon i'll stop rambling on um so yeah take care happy coloring and see you in the next video bye bye